I'm gonna have to take off right after I go single up. Yeah, so I'll have to scoot out. Huh? Oh, I parked it in the front. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. Kane doesn't care, I don't think. I mean, if you're just going to ask me to sing something, you can just talk to me. Anyway. Good morning. Please stand and join in singing our, op our opening song found in your hymnal, number 949. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. 949 in your hymnal. Oh. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together this morning, it's a beautiful day to celebrate First Holy Communion. I'm going to ask everyone to sit down for just a moment, except those who are receiving First Holy Communion today. One, two, three, four, five. Is that the right number we're supposed to have? Where's Katie? Katie? Is Katie here? Yeah, she's here. Good. Five, five, well, anyway. There she is. Hey. So this is them? Yes. Great. Okay, good. So we're glad you're here today, and we welcome you to the table of the Lord for the first time this morning. God bless you all. <laughs> and I'm going to have you keep seat, is standing, but we'll leave everybody seated for a moment. We call to mind the times that we have sinned and erred, those times that we've gone astray from God's will for us in our lives. We ask for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, you prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. As these young people from our community prepare to approach the altar of Christ for the first time to receive the Holy Eucharist, Fill all of our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, may we come to your promises. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can sit down. Thank you. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maiden. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, come. Eat of my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness, that you may live, and advance in the way of understanding. Word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Taste and see thy goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame when the poor one called out the Lord heard and from all his distress he saved him taste and see the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance 
but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ms. Katie, would you come up and introduce our first communicants today? Because uh, you remember all their names and I don't. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just, well, just, yeah, okay. stand by. Yeah, then they won't get mixed up so we know okay. who they are. We have Caleb. 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 Yay, you want to stand? <laughs> we have Cammie. We have Carter. We have Elizabeth and Natalie. Now tell us a little about each. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Usually we have First Communion sometime in May, which we did this year, of course. But also every once in a while we like to. Um, why should we wait till. Oh, there's a balloon up there. How'd that get up there? I don't know. And half the lights are on, the other half are not. It's always interesting when you come here because you never know what's going to happen when you come to the Newman Center. Like you didn't maybe know today that a... Uh... Thank you, Deacon. 
And so the, uh, the uh, anyway, you never know what's going to happen. And today we have, why wait till next May when these young people have already prepared for Holy Communion? Although for whatever different reasons and timing, they weren't here for Communion in May, but they're here for now. So that's the important thing. In fact, you know, you never know what's going to happen. In a few weeks at one of the Masses on the weekend, there may actually be a wedding during the regular Mass. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell you because you won't come. <laughs> but uh, but it won't add any time to the mass. It's it's very simple. But anyway, it's a long story, and I'm not going to tell it today. So anyway, the um, perfect readings for today are the ones that are chosen. I'm not talking about the other ones where it talks about evil and you know. I mean, that second reading today from Saint Paul. There's a lot of negative stuff in there. Um, if I can find it here. Watch how you live. Don't be foolish. That's good. Uh, that's good, because the days are evil, the days are evil. And you see a lot of people uh, saying that, that we're living in de de evil times and, you know, the modern, modern world is against the church and there's so many outside enemies attacking us and all this stuff. And that's, you know, sometimes when we hear things over and over and over and over again, we tend to think that they are absolutely the gospel truth. And they're not always the gospel truth, you know. Just because someone says something over and over again doesn't make it true. For instance, I'm five foot eleven and I weigh 180 pounds. Now, if I say that over and over again, unfortunately it won't make it true, but you know, but we hear things over and over again. So when we hear that uh, the church is being attacked by outside foes. Ah, yeah, a little bit here or there, maybe. But it's more about what we're doing with ourselves and to ourselves that's really important about accepting the life and the challenge and the love and the world that God and his son, Jesus Christ, have given to us. So, but there is some good advice here. Do not get drunk on wine. Yeah. Remember that, Caleb, okay? Do not get drunk on wine. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, sing, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing. That's really what Sunday is supposed to be about. It's a day, we call it the Sabbath. It's a day for enjoyment and for family. That's something we're losing in, quote unquote, modern times more and more. But the beautiful thing is when you go to some countries and different cities, especially where I've been in Spain and France and Italy, you find that Sunday becomes a family day where people really intergenerationally enjoy everyone, not in a kind of a forced way, but instead in a very natural way. And so it's very natural that our young people here coming to the altar of Christ, we have that, as I started to say, the beautiful gospel reading about Jesus being the bread of life. And uh, it, should, it should really say um, in, that, in that gospel, it says him, we should read it. We should say him or her. We understand it, that it's not just whoever eats my flesh, he will live forever. He or she will live forever. Now, this is reading this, we call it the Bread of Life Discourse, has been going on for weeks now, and I think the last week is uh, next week. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the last one. Do you think so, Deacon? I think it is. It is. Yeah, it's when they start to turn away from him. Some of the disciples turn away from him. Because this is a teaching that is hard, and it's difficult to understand, but it's also, they say, difficult to believe. How can he give us his flesh? to eat? How can he give us his blood to drink? And we have to remember that when we eat the body and the blood of Christ, which is appearing under the form of bread and wine, we take that in a true sense, a literal sense, but also we know that it is not, um, how can I say, it's not like chewing on yourself or somebody, I mean, or drinking blood. You're not a vampire, are any of you? No, we're not. So we're, we're drinking the blood of Christ, which he's left us, by what, what action, what event, what supper did Jesus celebrate with his apostles where he said, this is my body, take and eat. This is my blood, take and drink. Which supper, anybody? Which supper, let me give you a hint. It wasn't the first supper. Which <laughs> supper? Say it. Do you know? 
Last supper, last supper, last supper, last. You gonna say last? The final or last supper, yeah? The last supper, good. <sighs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> You're making me work hard for my $10 this morning, aren't you? Okay. So, I like to sometimes use the example, although over the years it's changed a little, but let me just try this with the five of you, the five who are receiving their first Holy Communion. Uh, do any of you celebrate Thanksgiving? Raise your hands if you celebrate. Oh, good. Okay, so you celebrate Thanksgiving. Where do you go for Thanksgiving? Do you go anywhere or do they come to your house? Your house. You go away? Where? Okay, do you go to a family house? Or, oh, family. Oh, so you go somewhere, you, you both. Are you sister? Oh, okay, great. Then that would make sense that you both go to the same. Where do you go? Your, they come to your house? Okay, where do you go? Your grandma's house? Is that what you said? Perfect. Not that all those other places aren't good. They're very good. But my example works with grandma's house because let me say this. God is like your grandmother, your grandmother, maybe some of your other grandmothers. God invites you to come to the Eucharist. And we all know, you five, I've all been taught repeatedly by, repeatedly by Miss Katie what the word Eucharist means, right, Miss Katie? Do you think any of them remember it this morning? What does the word Eucharist mean? Now remember, I was just asking you where you go on Thanksgiving, right? So what does the word Eucharist mean? Huh? What? No? No? Do you know? All right. Can you give them a hint? Thanksgiving? Okay. So, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, what does the word Eucharist mean? Yeah, I know you know it because you talked about I, it's, I said Thanksgiving a million times. I said go to their grandma's house for Thanksgiving. So take a guess. What does the Eucharist mean? Don't tell her no. What do you think it is? It's Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> the word Eucharist the word Eucharist, which we celebrate here, means thanksgiving. So this is our thanksgiving. Now let me try to make it easier here <laughs> for me. Um, Caleb, when you go to your grandmother's house for thanksgiving, what is the main uh, food you eat there? Turkey! Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to imitate a turkey, so you get it. And what else do you have usually? Potatoes. What kind of potatoes? Baked potatoes? Stuffed potatoes? Twice baked potatoes? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Mashed potatoes, of course. You don't have, I remember at a Thanksgiving one time, uh, 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 one of my sisters served, uh, I'm gonna sit down because I'm exhausted now from you. <laughs> Uh, my sister, one of my sisters served baked potatoes, you know. Well, this is no good. You can't have baked potatoes. Did you have anything else? Do you have those uh, green beans with the, with the onions on them and the mushroom soup or not? Does anybody have that? That was invented in the mid-1950s by somebody, I think, at Kraft Food, a woman invented that. It's become very popular. And you have uh, cranberry sauce, that when that comes out of the jar, or not the jar, the can, it goes... <laughs> makes that noise when it's coming out. It's got little rings around it. For, uh, uh, some of you, yeah, some of you got uh, that. The fancier people have that, you know, you get your fresh cranberries and you put them in the, you know, the, the uh, cuisine art and they put orange juice in them and stuff. And, but us regular folk have it right out of the can because that's a, so. And you might have some other things too. When we come to the altar, oh, let me ask you another thing. If your grandmother invites you to come and uh, you don't, do you th what do you think, how would she feel? Sad. Sad, yes. And at your age, if you said, to, well, let's see, how old are you? Nine. Nine. Well, when you're 14, you will say, I don't wanna go to grandma's house. Do you think you'll say that? Yeah. I know you know you won't, you won't, yeah. But other 13 and 14, you're like, oh, I don't wanna go to grandma's house. You have to go, why? Why do I have to go? Because you'll break your grandmother's heart if you don't, right? And so God, I said, is like your grandmother. He invites us to come 
to our thanksgiving. And at Thanksgiving, a lot of times, even if you don't go to grandma's house, you'll tell maybe different stories about when you were a kid or when, uh, you know, grandma or grandpa did something or were married or this or that or however it is. But there's stories you tell, and we tell the story too. Today you heard the story of Jesus saying, he is the bread of life come down from heaven. Uh, you know, if you eat this bread, you will live forever. And my, my, this bread, my flesh is life for the world. Young ladies and young gentlemen, today you come to receive the Eucharist for the first time, this Thanksgiving meal. Candles are lit on the altar table. Napkins, if you call them that, are used. They're called purificators. But in all of these things, it mirrors that Last Supper where Jesus instituted, made real, this wonderful sacrament. But remember, the bread and wine change into the body and blood of Christ. But when we receive the body and the blood of Christ, we're also called to change. We are called to change. For Christ, who in this beautiful spiritual and physical way comes to us today, Christ in the most holy Eucharist is the one who continues to bless our lives, to give us hope, and to guide us in the way to help one another. Our Pope, Pope Francis, says that we're supposed to accompany one another. That means walk with one another, go with one another, especially through difficult moments of life. When someone is in pain or grief, when they're sick, when they're in need of food or housing or education, whatever it is, it's so much easier to carry a burden if someone is with you to do that. The someone who is with us always to do that is Jesus, the Lord, the Christ. But we're also called to do that too with one another, to have the Christ that is present in us, recognize, see the Christ who is present in every person who is a creation of God the Father. So we are about to welcome you to the table of Eucharist today. We couldn't be happier to do that. And we pray that Christ, who you receive under the form of bread and wine, will continue to transform your life in joy, in life, in holiness, and especially in love. I invite all who are able now to please stand for our prayers of the faithful. Those receiving Holy Communion today were baptized years ago, and so they come to this moment, baptism being the first step in our spiritual lives. And so we pray for these young people to receive Holy Communion today, but also for those who are going to be baptized in our chapel, our Father Pat's community room today. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for all of our beloved dead, the recently deceased, those who have no one to pray for them, and especially at this Mass, the repose of Doris Clagg. For Doris and all who've gone before us, that they may have the fullness of life in your presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for all of uh, those who've asked for and need our prayers. There are many sick and sorrowing today. There are those in hospitals, nursing homes, undergoing special treatments for injuries or for diseases or illnesses, for all of these that we may walk with them in prayer and in fact, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our students that are coming to uh, that are coming back to the university. That, uh, that, that the Lord may guide them in whatever journey they're on. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Would anybody else like to offer any prayers? Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Over here. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We have another one over here.
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We had one in the back here. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, the earth has been blessed with so much goodness. Let us recognize the goodness, share it with others, and come at last to the banquet table of heaven where Jesus is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory song can be found in your hymnal number 911, many and great 911 in your hymnal. my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive this sacrifice, O Lord, by which you bring about this glorious exchange of gifts, that by offering what you've given, we may come to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, loving Father, almighty, eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the true and eternal priest who established this pattern of the everlasting sacrifice. He was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to offer this memorial. And so, as we eat his flesh, 
which he gave up for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that he poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with all the angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. indeed, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the cup. Once more he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We offer you, Father, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of faith, hope, and charity with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Bishop Fisher, and the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember our sisters and brothers, especially Doris, who've gone to their rest in the hope of resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your kingdom, that they may see you face to face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, the Apostles, the Martyrs, John Newman and all the saints, that we also will be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, Almighty Father, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Let's pray.
pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the joyful coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign and prayer for peace. For the distribution of Holy Communion today, first we'll have those receiving communion for the first time to come forward. total do we have Eucharistic ministries? Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. You have six. six. And you want four. Oh, how many total do we have? Seven? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed and joyful are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
So just like Thanksgiving, after the dinner, we do the dishes. <laughs> and I'm sure you all help do the dishes with mom or grandma or whoever you go to, right? No, okay, all right, fine. Let us pray. <clears throat> Excuse me. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing works of your mercy. Perfect us, sustain us so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
If you be seated for just a moment, I invite Sister Marie to come forward. <coughs> Good morning. I'm Sister Marie Schober. I'm a sister of St. Mary. And I'm here to speak to you about three of brochures that I have out in the entrances of the church. I only have a few minutes to speak, so I probably will speak fast in order to introduce these three different programs. The first one involves a 35-week retreat experience known as the Ignatian Retreat in Everyday Life. Ignatius had a conversion experience when he was a soldier from a strong-willed, egotistic soldier to someone who found God in everyone and everything. Eventually, this conversion experience became this retreat in everyday life. And down through the ages, and especially in the last 30 years since the Vatican Council, this conversion experience has influenced many, many people in today's lives. The Jesuits at Canisius run a program in that part of the city, and I would like to offer this to you. This, I admit, is not for everyone because of the long commitment, 35 weeks, 45 minutes of prayer a day. But if you feel that you are being called to an experience like this, I would encourage you to pick up this um, fire, and it explains it a little bit more, and you can always talk to me or give me a call for further information. It's for anybody, anybody on their faith journey, young, old, high school, right on up. I know it influences you for a lifetime. I made it over 30 years ago, and I still live from how my life with God was strengthened. And I know many people in this community have made that retreat, this retreat. The second flyer is a blue one. And this is for everybody, a possibility for everybody. Again, high school right on up. It's on compassion. I thought I was a compassionate person. And I'm sure all of you think you are compassionate people, and we are. But I also had an eye-opening experience when I began to read a couple of books, one in particular, Boundless Compassion by Joyce Rupp, and pray about them over and over again. And I started to realize I was a kind person and possibly a little compassionate, but I was very comfortable in what I did. I discovered that being compassionate is very hard, challenging, and it excludes no one for any reason. Living compassionately is rarely convenient and often downright challenging. It is a choice. It is a willingness to pay the price of loving regardless of the cost or the circumstances or who we believe is worthy of compassion. And part of this compassion is do, are we compassionate to ourselves, first and foremost, let alone the people who conflict with our ideas or values? I believe this is a very transforming experience to really delve into the meaning of compassion, especially in this world, in our families, in our church, where so many people are in opposition to one another. Jesus challenges us to be compassionate as our Father is compassionate. And it changed my life. It challenged me on my everyday decisions, how I pray for people, how I speak about people, whatever. I, on the brochure, you'll find that I will, if you're interested in anything on this, anything is open, any time, date, hour, format for the program, because I really believe it can be a life-changing experience for anybody who um, would like to take part in coming to know what a truly compassionate life, living like Jesus, lived. And the third thing that's out there is for anybody, too, high school and up. 
It's a two-week retreat experience where you just commit yourself to praying 30 minutes a day and meeting with myself or another spiritual director for maybe five or six times. It's a way of growing in a personal relationship with God. If we personally know God and the way Jesus lived in the presence of God in our life, that too can be transforming. So I would just encourage you, if any of this sounds interesting, to pick up one of these and contact me, and we can move on from there. And I thank you, and have a good day. Next weekend, the 6.30 p.m. Mass begins again on Sundays, and there will be one also on Labor Day. <laughs> So the so-called student mass, but anyone is welcome to attend in the same way that students are welcome to attend any of our other masses. But that's 6.30 p.m. next Sunday, August 24th. Uh, two days ago, just so you know, was Father Roy's birthday, if you see him. Um, we're so grateful that he ministers here and is available to us so generously here at the Newman community. And also, if you've not done so yet, please pick up your baskets from the barbecue. You can get them after Mass today. There, uh, someone's there to help you, so please don't forget about those. I invite all who are able to please stand. Oh, by the way, our, our uh, friend, uh, now I forgot his name, the guy from El Buen Amigo. What's his name? Oh, Santiago. Santiago? Santiago. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, Santiago is here today, right? Santiago. So. If anyone looks for a job to help, a free, a volunteer job to help him at the store or with different projects he's got going, he's here, so talk to him. After Mass, I invite the uh, first communicants to just stay near the altar. We'll take a couple of pictures, and then whatever you want to do with pictures with your family, you're most welcome to do. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine on you. May he look on you with kindness and give you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song can be found in your hymnal, number 910, Shepherd of Souls, 910 in your hymnal. and pure.